I wonder if you both might comment on this. At a, in an age when there is so much, as Mr. Hitchens would put it, wonderful secular knowledge that should disprove or replace the value or the importance of religion, all the modern knowledge that we have, why is it that in so much of the world religion is growing rapidly? In the global south particularly, evangelical Christianity is growing at a tremendous rate, and there are plenty of statistics to back that up. And even when people experience the most horrendous evil, they seem to turn in some strong ways towards religious belief. My brother-in-law is a US Air Force chaplain. He served two tours in Iraq. He's presently in Afghanistan. He ministers to men and women who have seen horrendous evil and experienced it firsthand. And yet his services are overflowing. He's done many baptisms. Please help us understand a time when the human race should have grown out of all of this. Why is it growing so dramatically? Thank you. Well, at the risk of being callous, can I assume just to be an audible? I don't think that we should be paying for chapters. I don't think the US government should be employing them. James, James Madison, co-author of the Virginia Statute on Religious Freedom and of the First Amendment, was very adamant on the point, very clear. Uh, there shouldn't be, it's flat out on unconstitutional to pay uh, or employ a chaplain to open the proceedings of Congress or to be in the armed forces. We can't have chaplains on our payroll, that's that. People who want to pray can't be stopped, but they can do it. Of all the solitary activities, apart from the search for, uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> Uh, surely that's one that doesn't need a paid state mediator. It's a negation of the American Revolution. So that first. Second, yes, the modern modernity, evolving as it does, a huge exchange of uh, technology and uh, population and innovation in a very churning and indigenous manner, of course means that a lot of lives have to be lived in a very insecure and risky way. And it's not at all uh, un like our nature as a species, to try and cling to stability, certainty, and consolation in those cases. It, it explains itself, it seems to me. Um, what is notable, though, is it hasn't come up in thousands of years with any superior explanation to the old ones. It still is going back to myths that were discredited and exploded many years ago. And these, of course, turn out to be false consolations, whereas the consolations of philosophy and of the aesthetic and of the beauty of science and reason is available to us all the time and really able to explain why things happen, why terrible wounds are inflicted in Afghanistan. So, no, no, that won't do. Let's, uh, like some absolute <coughs> loser, find the, 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 the person who paley means, who says, finds a watch on the beach and thinks, I don't know what this is for, but it seems to take, it must be for something doesn't understand it. We find this wonderful truffle and open it and look at the chocolate and throw it away and then munch on the wrapper. I don't understand it, but I'm one of those who are not made this way. I think the core of your question, uh, I think that the more mankind learns, the more mankind understands that it does not have all the answers. And that's why people continue to reach and seek answers that is beyond what even in this age we've been able to discover. I think that is why. And I think that there's also the innate emptiness in mankind to always go back to the core of what made mankind in the first place. And that, to me, is a supreme being. I think that answers the question of why I think the envelop I thought you got the Holy Ghost or something while I was saying. But uh, I think that's I why you see sh- the rise of evangelism. That's the rise. Holler, man. Whether or not I agree with the rise or not is another uh, question. But I think the quest is inspired because of, because of the increased knowledge has not answered the question of where it begins and what governs all of the things that obviously operate in some order and with some precision. And I must say, at the risk of my sounding callous, it amazes me that it doesn't bother you that we spend $2 trillion in a war we should have never been in. You just worry about paying the chaplains to pray over
Yeah, well, you see, I don't love our enemies, and I don't love people who do love them. I hate our enemies, and I think they should be killed. Uh, and I think that uh, they want to kill me. And I think we could do it probably with half the budget, or maybe twice, but I'm absolutely sure that there should be no country that has a budget that can threaten ours. And I'm not sentimental about it. But I want to have another whack at that very so question the now. So people that preach God and love should shut up and remain no, private, no, but people, killers ought to just go and people who just preach, kill people no, that they call the their preach. That's preach, very ethical and... and the people who preach yeah, Allahu yeah. Akbar, people who preach Allahu Akbar have better find out that there's a stronger force than them and one that also has unalterable convictions and principles, and that can also be offended, and that they're offended at their peril, that's what I think. Now, to, this, to the last question, I just want to have one more run at it. You already answered. I know, but if you don't mind. You tried. This is something, twice. when I started hurling myself around like a okay. shout and holler person, I that was because well, I suddenly there's no right or wrong with you, so go okay. ahead. <laughs> Answer three times. The questions that they come and ask these chaplains are, why, why, why? Why does it happen? But, the nicest guy in my unit just took a round through the throat. You know, that I've just been in this village where the ch all the children have been killed, and where you, you can feel it in the spirit of it. Why, why, why? That's what the question is. Well, do you, have you ever heard any spokesman of any religion give an answer to that question? They've had thousands of years to think about it. No, they haven't. No. Unless to say, as they used to when it was a plague or a war or a tsunami, well, it's probably a sign of sin. You've been punished. The Archbishop of Canterbury in England two years ago says he really worries how God could be so mean as to unleash a tidal wave towards the Christmas time in Asia. You can't believe you're listening to this stuff. Now, if you ask me, okay, I'll say, why did this happen? Why did the best guy I know get cancer of the throat or get mugged or killed, slaughtered or whatever? I say, because we belong to an imperfectly evolved species where the adrenaline glands are too big, the prefrontal lobes are too small, and we bear every sign of the stamp of our lowly origin. We, only by just realizing the fact that we are mammals <coughs> are we likely to be able to talk any sense of it. And if you say, well, why did that city fall down or be overcome by waves, or that volcano kill all those children? I say, well, I hate to break it to you, but we live on a cooling planet whose crust hasn't quite settled yet, and these are to be expected. And there is no other explanation for them, and don't believe anyone who says there is. Well, this is not the perhaps perfect effort of instruction, but it, it does conform to the Hippocratic injunction, prima non necessary. At least I'm not lying. At least what I say can be in their heart. At least the cow can increase the amounts they already have. Usually when you go to that village and ask, why are the children being killed? Because someone who believed in God thought that they had a problem. Yeah, hi, peeps. It's Tess back in the old squat box once again. And uh, so you've just seen a, a question I ask a question to you know, Al Sharpton and Christopher Hitchens. Uh, I'll mention what uh, Al Sharpton uh, has answered. And I'll cover that first. Uh, he went on to say about, you know, well, in this age of technology, you know, people have questions and they're looking for answers, and yeah, that's exactly it. And uh, the only people who've got to ask the ask the questions that they have about, you know, why these horrible things have happened and what's the reason for them being in these horrible situations. And, is a pastor because that's what's there and uh, the answers they get are basically the same any bullshit crap answers that we've been getting for 2,000 fucking years. Somebody telling us that they know that it's God that did it and there's a reason for it, we don't know what the reason is because God moves in mysterious ways, you've just got to have faith and belief and carry on, you know. That's basically the answer Al Sharpton's trying to present to you. Then we've got the, the answer that, for, uh, that uh, Christopher Hitchens gave you. Uh, I don't believe that's a real answer either. He, he started to attack the fact that uh, the government pays for pastors to be in the 
in the military, in the navy, in the air force, and that, yeah, I, I totally agree with that, that America should not pay for it. But I do believe that there is a better answer to the question, which is, if we were not to have the only person you could go to under these circumstances to be a pastor, if everybody, not just in the army in Afghanistan, but in, in the real world, back, back at home, in the United States, in the United Kingdom, when you were having terrible things happen in your life, if you had the ability like we, we have in the United Kingdom to, to go to your doctor and be referred to a psychologist who would you know, speak to you and talk you through the problems you've got and use uh, psychology and understanding and counselling to talk you through the difficulties you're having with you know, the way you see your life. I'm wondering whether, both in the real world in America, you know, the normal citizen in America, and the soldiers in Afghanistan, wouldn't perhaps have a better outcome, wouldn't perhaps be helped more, if you really stop paying for pastors to counsel people who have went through horrific experiences seeing their best buddy killed. A pastor doesn't have the answers, all he gives you is the half faith answer. God knows in mysterious ways. Whereas uh, someone who's you know, studied for six or eight years psychology of the, the, the human condition and is able to, you know, talk you through your problems, what your problems are why you're asking these questions, what you think about it inside yourself, and then counsel you on how to deal with these real life problems, that would be money better spent. That's my answer to that guy's question. And uh, I hope that um, people will understand where I'm coming from. So why don't you fucking vote?